Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is KCAL 9 News at 4. Now at 4.30, the coronavirus pandemic is spiraling out of control in America. The U.S. has reported more than one million new cases in five days this month. And to put that into perspective, it took nearly 100 days for the country to record the first million cases. Now, locally, the numbers are going in the wrong direction as well. Here's a look at some of today's headlines. All right, so here in L.A. County, there were more than 8,000 new cases. Nearly 3,000 of those people are hospitalized. And 24% of them are in intensive care right now. We are joined by Dr. Vic Waters, Chief Medical Officer for Dignity Health's St. Bernardine Medical Center. Dr. Waters, tell us what you're seeing in your hospital first off and the ICU situation there. Well, the San Bernardino County hospitals, and us included, at St. Bernardine Medical Center are experienced surges. We have a large number of patients uh, over, just over the past few weeks, a uh, significant increase of our hospitalizations in our ICU, clearly across all of San Bernardino. A, qu a quick question for you also regarding um, the patients you're seeing. Are most of these patients being intubated as well? Early on in the pandemic, we saw a lot of these patients being intubated, and then we heard some uh, different information about that. What, what are some of the patients in ICU dealing with right now? Yeah, we're, we're still dealing with patients that require intubation. Many may need to be on what we call rotoprone beds where you rotate to improve their oxygenation. Uh, the patients are a little bit different this time around. They're patients who have COVID diagnosis, have been, have been exposed to COVID, but may be coming in for other complex medical conditions. So it's not as, uh, as robust in that sense of the word. Well, let's talk about the vaccine now. A lot of people talking about that and being very hopeful. The U.K. is going to start vaccinating people this week and the U.S. in the next couple of weeks. So, doctor, what do you say to people who think that the vaccine will fix all of this and then just fix it quickly? And then second, what do you say to people who are scared mm. to get the vaccine? They just don't trust it. Right. And I understand there's been a lot of uh, concerns about the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. But what I can say is, and our organization, Dignity Health, is really looking at the, the data very hard as we get approval from emergency use. We want to employ and deploy this vaccination as quickly as possible. And let me say this, so far preliminarily, it seems to be safe. I'm going to take the back, get the vaccine, receive immunization, and roll this out to the high risk frontline providers as an example. That's my commitment because as I understand it, this is a this can make a difference. Now, it doesn't mean that you can just go out there and not wear masks. You need to continue to use the same precautions because there's still a chance that you could potentially get COVID. So it's not gonna mm. change everything overnight. This is a long marathon road right now we're in, but the vaccine hopefully will make a difference. Yeah, we do hope. And uh, yeah, we just don't know if it will prevent transmission mm -hmm. or how long you will stay immune, correct, to coronavirus. Yes. That's correct. We yeah. don't know the exact time, the duration of the vaccine's efficacy, but so far uh, there are some hopeful signs that it can help make a difference. Okay. Well, what about this? You know, I'm sure some people at home are thinking, hey, if you're running low on hospital beds, why don't you just add more? Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? Are, are we looking right now, first off in your situation, two patients, three or more to a room? No, but what I can say is if you need help, if you need care, you still need to come to the emergency room. There is far more uh, disadvantages of trying to stay home when you really need to come to the emergency room and seek help. Our hospitals are more prepared. We have the adequate testing. We have adequate protective equipment. We, we're working to accommodate every patient that we can to serve and to treat and to heal. It's important not to take it upon themselves to stay at home and not get the proper care. But can you add more beds? Just going back to that mm -hmm. question, how easy is that to then expand the care? Well, every hospital in, in the area and the LA County is gonna struggle with accommodating pa patients in their rooms, but we are gonna continue to do that. So that means if we have to put up, put up tents, if we have to find other additional spacing, it's called, we're in a pandemic, we think out of the box and we provide and provide as much uh, space and care so everyone is safely cared for in the proper place. That includes the intensive care unit. And doctor, what about staffing when it comes to that? I know a lot of nurses, 
um, have been stressed, doctors have been stressed during this time. How's staffing at this point? Well, every, in the area, it's really been a challenge. And every hospital is faced with uh, staff being, you know, staff calling out because they may have been in contact with a COVID patient or may be ill themselves. So it's a real challenge. Everybody is pulled in to work together to try to mitigate the stress. This is no question unprecedented uh, times we're in, but the staff are committed. They understand what's happening. We're doing everything we can to protect them and give them the time they need, the breaks they need. Uh, we've been bracing for this. We've been in the eye of the storm for a while, and now here we are in the storm. So we've been doing everything to gear up our staff, and protect them, make sure we have adequate backup. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate all that you do and the nurses as well. Dr. Vic Waters, Chief Medical Officer for Dignity Health St. Bernardine Medical Center, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Mm -hmm.